In this video, we're going to do an example uh, using the concepts introduced in the last video of probability functions. Specifically, we're going to uh, study the case of the 1s electron orbiting a hydrogen atom to illustrate how we can perform calculations with a probability density function. So for the 1s electron, its wave function is given by this expression. So the wave function uh, decays exponentially the further away it gets from the, uh, the center of the atom. And then we just have an extra condition saying that the electron can't be in the nucleus of the hydrogen atom. Over here, this A naught is a constant uh, known as a Bohr radius, which is about half an angstrom. So in quantum mechanics, the probability of finding a particle uh, in some volume dV, given its wave function, is given by the square modulus of its wave function times uh, the element dV. So what you realize is the square modulus of the wave function is a probability density function as we had defined it in the last video. The first part of this example, and I'm just going to abbreviate this as PDF. So in the first part of this example, we are going to normalize the PDF of the 1s electron in the hydrogen atom. Uh, by 1s electron, I mean the electron in the lowest orbital of the hydrogen atom. So to normalize it, we need to satisfy the condition that if you integrate over all of space, so the entire uh, volume, uh, then this has to equal to one. They're just saying that the particle has to be somewhere in space. Because we expressed our wave function in spherical coordinates, r theta and phi, this becomes a triple integral. with their square modulus and dv is given by r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And because we're integrating over all of space, r can take values from zero to infinity. Theta has to take its entire range, zero to pi. So theta is the azimuthal angle and phi uh, takes values from zero to two pi. So again, over its whole range because we're integrating over all space. So plugging in our value for the wave function and finding its square modulus, we pick up an A squared, which is the constant we're trying to, to find. Integrate, so because our wave function only depends on R, it's completely spherically symmetric, then we can separate our integrals into three iterated integrals. So we can perform integration of theta independently of the integration of phi and independently of the integration of R. These two integrals give you a factor of four pi. And this is zero to infinity. R squared e dr. Okay, so what we've done here 
is integrated out any dependencies on theta and phi, and we're only left with a radial probability density function. So this is sometimes, we can denote it like that. This is our radial, and it, the radial probability uh, density function gives you the probability of finding uh, an electron in this case at some distance away from the nucleus. Regardless of its uh, angular position. Okay, so if you have a circle, whether it's here, here, or here, as long as they're at the same distance, they'll have the same probability. Now to evaluate this integral, uh, instead of integrating by parts repeatedly, we can uh, do a little bit of a trick. And note that if you take the derivative with respect to one, with respect to the inverse of the Bohr radius, I'm treating the Bohr radius as a variable for the moment, taking the derivative of this gives you minus two R e to the minus two R a naught. And if you take the second derivative, P minus two R A naught, then this gives you four R squared E minus two R over A naught. And you'll see that you see that this factor over here is essentially the same factor we have over here, except for the extra A squared and pi. So what that means um, we can so we had four pi a square zero to infinity. We can replace this integral that we had. by the integral of the second partial derivative of this function. And because here we're differentiating with respect to one over a naught and we're integrating with respect to R, we can take the derivative outside of the integral And we're left with a more straightforward integral to evaluate. And then if you keep turning the crank, eventually you get that this is equal to a cubed. And again, we're trying to normalize this. So this has to be equal to one. And for this to be equal to one, you need that a is equal to one over the square root of the Bohr radius cube times pi. So we can re-express our wave function then. Yes, so we found the value of a. And by extension, we've normalized the probability density function of finding the one S electron uh, in some point in space. We can take this a step further. We 
And now we would like to know the probability of finding the 1s electron somewhere between the nucleus and at a distance that's twice the Bohr radius. If you recall from the last video, one of the properties of the probability density function is that you can find the probability of being in some interval, in this case between zero and two A naught. By integrating the radial probability density function that we found in the first part at the boundaries that we're interested in calculating the probability of. In this case, this, we could plug in our value for the radio probability density function f of r. You're left with this integral to do. And if you turn the crank and evaluate this, you end up with 0 0.762. So you have about a 76% chance of finding the electron somewhere between the nucleus, but not including the nucleus, and twice the Bohr radius. So this video showed how you can use the concept of the probability density function to evaluate probabilities in the particular context of the 1s electron uh, in the hydrogen atom. In the next video, we'll introduce another probability function that will allow us to calculate uh, cumulative probabilities.